faithful to me and then the rest pray to the Lord. Lord I fear more than for an abundance of the fruits of the earth than for peaceful times of this pray to the Lord. Lord I fear for those who travel by seer and life, those sick to suffer and the captive and for their salvation.
the Lord be blessed. He who dwells in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. 
On this feast of St. Thomas the Apostle, we are very well aware of Thomas's reputation for being a doubter. In fact, we have in our popular lexicon in the English language the doubting Thomas, the person who always seems to question everything, even with a bit of cynicism, even with a bit of despair sometimes in their tone. But I would put forward today that the Holy Apostle Thomas gave a far better record of faith and trust in God than a lot of the disciples did during the Gospels. In fact, if we go through the Gospel of St. John, we find in Thomas a rather impulsive individual, but at the same time, we find someone who at least speaks up, expresses himself, and is challenging, but still willing to learn. Indeed, his name means twin. And if there is one good thing we can definitely say about St. Thomas, is that unlike his twin, he simply showed up. It's one of the more fascinating things when you think about it, that if Thomas was a twin, how come his brother was not among the original apostles? We have James and John, Andrew and Peter, and we have Thomas, but his twin is missing. Now, we don't know 100% the reason why, but presuming that his twin was around, he certainly wasn't in the immediate company of our Lord's followers. So Thomas scores, when it comes to what we say in modern terms, the ministry of presence. He is there. And he's there all along the way. As a matter of fact, he shows even more commitment to our Lord. When our Lord goes to raise Lazarus from the dead, the people in Bethany are already upset that he is delayed coming several days to take care of Lazarus. And now when they find out that he's dead, Jesus is on his way to Bethany. The disciples try to discourage him, but finally Thomas is the one who says, let us go and die with him. Statement of bravery or bravado, maybe a little bit of both, we're not sure. We're told at the Mystical Supper that Jesus tells the disciples, I am going, and you will follow, and you know the way. Thomas immediately objects and says, Lord, we have no idea where you're going. How can we know the way? Such a challenge. We could thank Thomas the Apostle for this, elicited one of the more beautiful, eloquent expressions by Jesus about who he exactly is. Where he replied by saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, Thomas's most famous instance in the Gospels is obviously at the time of our Lord's resurrection. He is not there for some reason. Maybe he was looking for his twin brother at this particular point. Who knows? But in any event, he was not present when the risen Lord first appeared to the disciples. When he's told later that they have seen him, he says, I will not believe until I can take my fingers and probe the nail prints and put my hand into his side. Pretty bold words. We must remember something, that Thomas is only a reflection of the doubt that the disciples had when the women first announced to them that the Lord was risen and the tomb was empty. The other disciples certainly had the advantage of already seeing the risen Lord. And when the risen Lord one week later finally does confront Thomas and invites him to actually touch him and experience him, Thomas replies, my Lord and my God. He is the only disciple who actually addresses Jesus as God. We feel ourselves sometimes going through moments of doubt, maybe even a little bit of cynicism in our lives, or even tempted toward despair. We must remember that when we experience these challenging thoughts and feelings within our lives, no matter what the subject might be, 
it usually means that we have already given good thought and consideration and hopefully some good action to what is challenging us. The opposite is perhaps even worse, and that is to simply not acknowledge or think or express or challenge what we need to do in order to grow within our lives. Let's take the opportunity today to honor the Holy Apostle Thomas, not as the one known for his doubts, but the one who is known ultimately for his faith, for his courage, for his willingness to express himself, and finally, to know truly that Jesus is God. May God bless each and every one of us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ. Wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? See, in guilt I was born, a sinner was I conceived. Indeed, you have proved in the heart, and in the secret of my heart, teach me wisdom. O purify me, then I shall be clean. O wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. May be your rejoicing and gladness, that the bones you have brought may prove. O my sins, turn away your face, and blot out all my guilt. O your heart, free from you, God, for a sin of spirit within me. Not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Give me again the joy of your help, for the spirit of perverse has saved me. That I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. For as you be God, my Father, and my tongue shall bring out your goodness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. For in sacrifice you take my life, for an offering from me you will I sacrifice a contrite spirit, a humbled contrite heart you will not spurn. In your goodness show me your desire, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And you will be pleased with awful sacrifice, burnt offerings wholly consumed, and you will be offered young bulls on your altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The intercession of the Apostle Thomas, all merciful one, why not a multitude of our sins? Now and ever and forever, amen. Through the prayers of the Neotokos, all merciful one, on me, God, in your kindness, in your compassion, blot out my offense. O holy fathers, for your apostle, you who are sent as a radiant sunrise to the people of India, you who brought glory to their darkness, by the brilliance of your words preaching the faith in the divine trinity, us today we celebrate your sacred memory.
apostles of his free to God for us. The Apostle Thomas pray to God for us. Holy Apostle Thomas pray to God for us. To the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen.
in his arm, he has scattered the proud in the conceit of their heart. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, who a virgin gave birth to God the birth. You truly the Theotokos we magnify. servant being mindful of his love, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, who a virgin gave birth to God the Word. You are truly the Theotokos, we magnify. Thomas, pray to God for us. You were like a resplendent chariot bearing the word of God on your radiant soul. God who holds the reins of the greatest apostle, peace is coming to all those who have been sent by you. Holy Apostle Thomas, pray to God for us. As we celebrate your blessed memory, we achieve to deliver us from all anxiety by the holiness of Jesus. The Apostle Thomas pray to God for us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen.
Of symbols, 
Let everything that lives and that breathes give praise to the Lord. Thank you.
now and ever and forever. Amen. Thank you. 